thank you for joining us today on the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Many say cassava is a crop that grows everywhere here in Nigeria. Despite the saying, the yields here in the country is well below attainable yields. The question is, what are the farmers doing wrong? Today on Earth Far, we will find out the way forward. Do stay with us. Elora Farm Settlement is one of nine in Oyo State. It was established in 1960 by the defunct Western Region Government. There are 250 farmers here, each having 10 hectares of land. The Elora Farm Settlement currently has 17 cooperatives all working together to sustain the farming community. And there are problems here. Pala Sisi Giwa is one of the pioneer farmers in Elora. Today, he is the chairman of the Laura Farm Settlement and the president of Oyo Farm Settlers Association. To maintain his 10 hectares, he employs the services of tractor owners for 5,500 naira per hectare. He needs to engage them at least three times in the planting season. He also needs to weed his farmland during the season, paying about 7,000 naira per hectare. By weeding, it costs, it costs much more money than spraying. He has weeded this cassava farm, planted in May 2016 for five times. To him and many of his colleagues, weeding is a major challenge. The people that we weeding for us, as the price of the market goes, is as the price they are going to commence on. If I want to weed one acre of, of land now, it will take 7,000. And 7,000 in 25, you know what it means? You can see. But for all his 10 months labor, the one. yield is still very low. After 10 months. Just beside his farm is an experimental plot of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. The cassava on the IITA plot was planted within the same period, but the difference in output is stunning. Let me take it out. It was planted the same day, the same month, the same year. But looking at the stem, the comparison is there. The first factor is land preparation. Okay. Because before you can attain a good yield of cassava product, your land preparation is matter most. With the way we prepare our land is different from the way they prepare their own land. We plow, we arrow, then we reach. That one definitely suppresses the wheat. So after that, another factor is the varieties. The varieties of cassava matter most in controlling the wheat. The third factor is the density. What I mean by density is the spacing given from one plant to another. We planted this eight by eight, eight centimeter by eight centimeter. So the planting method also contributes to control the, the, the control of the wheat. Many different types of weeds occur in cassava farms and cause considerable losses to the farmer. This is because weeds compete with the cassava crop for nutrients, sunlight and space. Weeds may harbor pests and diseases or physically injure cassava plants and storage roots. Weeds may also harbor natural enemies that control pests. So certain weeds can be left on cassava farms, provided they are not many enough to compete with the crop. The presence of weeds limits the productivity of cassava and negatively impacts farming families. Weeding takes 50 to 80 percent of the total labor budget of cassava growers. Up to 200 and 500 hours of labor for mostly women and children per hectare are required to prevent economic cassava root losses in Nigeria. Women contribute more than 90 percent of the hand weeding labor, while 69 percent of farm children between the ages of 5 and 14 are forced to leave school and engage in weeding. This burden compromises their education. And we know in Nigeria, cassava is one of the most important food crops and cash crops for really millions of Nigerian families. And so we've conducted some analysis with our Nigerian partners saying, 
What's holding back the productivity of those farms? Why are they not getting higher yields? Why are they getting only 10, 12 tons when they could get 20, 25 tons? And there's various factors, but we learned that one of the most important ones are weeds. And weeds are a big problem in, in cassava farms. And when there's weeds on the farms, the weeds take the water and the nutrients away from the cassava and they reduce yields. So if we can find more effective ways to remove the weeds, fight the weeds, or suppress the weeds so they don't grow at all, we know we can improve productivity. And we also can remove the drudgery of hand weeding, which we know is a burden for men, women, and children. And if we can find a better way than leaning over with the short hoe to control these weeds, then that's what we want to do through this program. Cassava is mainly grown in mixtures with other crops by subsistence farmers using unimproved methods of production. Root yields from farmers' fields are generally low, partly due to effects of weed competition. Whole weeding is a common practice among cassava farmers. The frequency and timing of weeding depend on such factors as climate, cultural practices, crop growth, fertility, and weed species. Farmers can actually reach their cassava, and with that, they will be able to control weeds. Again, one other thing that we have found is that for any weed control, if you are able to look at the issue of land preparation at the initial stage, you are likely going to control weeds than when you do a poor land preparation. The Cassava Weed Management Project, or the Sustainable Weed Management Technologies for Cassava Systems in Nigeria, is a five-year project that is assessing sustainable weed management technologies for cassava-based farming systems in the country. The project is seeking to find solutions to the labor-intensive weeding usually performed by about 125,000 household farmers in Nigeria. We're testing various approaches under this program. It's a partnership, of course, between IITA and various national institutions, including National Root Crop Research Institute in Umadike, other partners in FUNAB and Abiyakota and Makurdi and Benue and others. Um, what, what they're doing is trying different approaches. One of them is they're trying it through traditional agronomy. So looking, is there a way that we can modify the plant population or the land preparation that will help reduce weeds or suppress weeds? So that's the agronomic approach. Then they have the mechanical approach where they're testing some machines that can be used, gas-powered machines, petrol-powered machines that can be used to replace hand hoeing. Uh, they're testing those for their efficacy. And then lastly, they're testing chemical approaches, herbicides. And there they're showing some very promising results in terms of there are pre-emergent herbicides that can be sprayed at the same time one plants the cassava that will suppress weed growth almost totally for up to two months. And that's quite a blessing for the farmer who doesn't have to hand weed their farm for two months. And so these are the type of chemicals that are being tested for their efficiency, but also for their safety, because we want to make sure whatever chemicals get introduced as new chemicals here in Nigeria are both effective and safe for farmers and their families. Within the last three years, researchers have screened environmentally friendly and safe herbicides and motorized mechanical options for weed control in cassava. Labor is expensive difficult to get. Um, people on their own go to the market and buy herbicides that are not registered, that are not approved, that you don't even understand. Uh, so our responsibility is to bring something that is safe for the country and safe for farmers. And our responsibility again is to teach farmers how to use them uh, safely so that nobody is hurt. This is not only in cassava, in maize, in any crop, in the tomatoes you use and all that. So a lot of education is, is required. But for cassava, we are really, really interested in getting those products that have been found effective and save some other places to, to re replace uh, uh, what farmers are currently using. We are looking at an integrated option for cassava production. You have your herbicides, you have, uh, for example, we are looking at motorized small weeders. Yeah, so when you combine these two, um, you are better off than uh, 
talking of herbicide and herbicide all the time. Because sometimes if you are not trained and you begin to use a particular herbicide, it could also lead to problems like resistant weeds. So we advise an integrated option where you put a herbicide and you also have something else to... But we to, are talking about small-scale... Farmers, uh, yeah. Poor farmers, not yeah. just small-scale... Yeah. We are looking at machines yeah, that small-scale farmers can buy. These machines I'm talking about is not for large scale. They are small weeders that you can use in your small farms. The best recommendation for each of the components are put together in a package and applied on farmers' field. For instance, researchers found that increasing the population of cassava from 10,000 to 12,500 at a pacing of 1 meter by 0 0.8 meters gives a better result than the current practice of 1 meter by 1 meter. What we are seeing is that if you are able to uh, plant cassava at 12,000 uh, 12,500 stands per hectare, you are likely to control weeds than planting at 10,000 stands per hectare. This is a very informative message that we feel that farmers can use. Uh, instead of planting cassava at one meter by one meter, which gives you 10,000 stands per hectare, they can now begin to plant at one meter by 0 0.8 meters. So that helps them, you know, because the cassava can easily and quickly form canopy and therefore smother the weeds. That is one. Another finding that is interesting to us that we are seeing is that uh, if you reach, you are likely more to control weeds than if you plant cassava on flat. We have also looked at the uh, possibility of adding fertilizer. We discover that yes, fertilizer might have some impact on the yield of, of uh, you know, cassava, but it does not necessarily control weeds. We also did some work on intercrop, and in this case, intercropping cassava with maize. And what we have found is that when you intercrop, in most cases, what happens is that uh, you are not likely to again control weeds. So dispersing is very critical as farmers prepare to plant cassava this year. They should be looking at reducing dispersing that they plant cassava from one meter by one meter to one meter by 0 0.8. Weeds have become one of the most notorious constraints to agricultural development in sub-Saharan Africa, undermining the gains made through crop improvement. They hurt both yields and health of farmers. Several studies indicate that weeds account for crop yield losses of 62 to 100 percent in maize, 50 to 90 percent in cassava, and 29 to 55 percent in soybean. They limit the ability of resource-poor farmers to expand their farm sizes and expose them to ailments such as back aches. Economically, weeding gulps 50 to 80 percent of the total labor budget. To tackle the menace, a handbook of West African weeds have been made to provide the requisite knowledge to be able to carry out task of weed identification. It's just a, a training tool. If you walk in your garden and you move around, you see these weeds, it's good for you to know it. So you just flip through, the pictures are very good, you can identify what is in your farm. And in fact, in most of the herbicide labels, they will tell you this chemical can control this weed and that weed. So having that small book is, is, is good. It's not, not only good for us here in, the, in IIT, it's good for the universities, colleges of education, faculties of agriculture. As you train your students, you use that as, um, as a material they can, they can use. A handbook of West African weeds is divided into four parts, and they deal with aquatic and lowland weeds dryland weeds, weed seedlings, and woody plants, and it lists over 300 types of weeds.